You ever watch those videos where people clone themselves? Yeah, I love those types of videos. Yeah, me too. How do they do those? Yeah, so a lot of times people will actually just use a split screen. They'll essentially create a mask and they'll film one part of the conversation over here. They'll film another part of the conversation over here. They'll just make sure that the background is the same in both videos. And then they'll use the mask to actually splice those together. And sometimes they'll even use a green screen or a chroma key to actually composite the different people into the scene. But now that we have the magnetic mask, I think it's gonna be a lot easier and we're gonna have a lot more freedom when we do these cloning effects. That's actually really cool. Dude, are we doing another magnetic mask video? How many of these are we gonna do? <laughs> we're doing another video, aren't we? Yeah, we are. So now over here in Final Cut Pro, we're gonna actually recreate that introduction and we're gonna do it using the magnetic mask. But before we do that, I wanna show you really quickly how you would create just a simple cloning effect using a person on one side, a person on the other, and then just doing a split screen with a mask. So let me show you that really quick because that's super easy to do. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab this right knee clip here and we're gonna put that down on the bottom. And then we're gonna take the left knee clip here and we're gonna put that on the top. And so you can see now that left me is in the frame, right me is also in the frame, but he's currently covered by the one on top. And so to make him visible, we're gonna use this draw mask. We're just gonna drag the draw mask on top of the top layer, and we're just gonna mask the one that's visible. So we're gonna click and create a mask, and I'm gonna put it so that it goes along the line of that door. And if we do that, now, after we created the mask, it's going to create a mask around the side that's visible over on the left, and it's going to show what wasn't masked on the right side, so that's going down to the bottom clip, and so now both clips are visible on each side. And as long as your background is lined up and it isn't changed at all, then this will 100% work. And so you're essentially just creating a conversation between two people here that are masked on each side. And it's really that easy to do if you're just having something simple like this. But we're gonna go above and beyond the simple now. Because what we want is for characters to be able to kind of cross each other and go behind each other and have kind of a dynamic situation where they have a relationship with one another. So because we're going in depth like that and we want the characters to kind of interact with one another, we have to go a little bit deeper into this. We're going to use the magnetic mask because it gives us, I think, the most flexibility to do this. Like I said in the introduction, you can do this with green screen and a chroma key, and as long as you have a background that's the same, then you can ultimately have different characters composited into the scene using green screen. But that seems like a lot of work to me. I don't think that you have to actually do that much work to make this happen. In Final Cut Pro 11, since we have this magnetic mask now, all of that stuff just got so much easier. So let me show you. So you can see here that I have three different video clips. I have a video clip that is the left side, the right side, and the center. So basically I have the left me, the person sitting on the left. I have the right me, which is the person sitting on the right and talking. And then I have the chair me, that's the guy sitting in the center talking. It's probably gonna get weird in this video because I'm gonna talk about myself in the third person a lot. I'll be talking about left me and right me and chair me and there'll be all sorts of me's and it'll be a me festival. So the way that this is gonna work, whichever scene we want to be actually in the background is going to be the bottom layer. It's going to be in the primary storyline. So that will actually be the left me over here, okay? Because left me, if you look at this video, as we scrub through it, you can see that eventually left me gets up, kind of gets mad, storms away. And since left me is going to be walking in the background behind everybody else, we want him to be on the bottom. So we're gonna make him, click on that, hit the E key so that it ends up in the primary primary storyline, and that's going to be the back layer of our scene. Now, the next layer up is going to be right me, okay? Now, right me is going to be in front of left me because left me is gonna go behind right me. This is getting confusing. So what we need to do now is we need to make right me on top of left me. And if you watched my Final Cut Basics video, you know that if I want to actually connect this video to the one below it, I can actually just choose the video that I want and make sure that my playhead is back at the beginning and I can hit the Q key. And now the Q key is going to connect it to the actual primary storyline. And so now what I have is a video sitting on top of the other one. We're just gonna make sure that it's pulled all the way back here. 
And now I have two videos, one on top of the other, and the left me is the lowest level, the right me is the next level up, and then on top of that, we wanna put chair me. Oh, chair me is so adorable. So let's throw chair me on top. We're gonna make sure that our playhead is all the way back at the beginning. We're going to make sure that we have the chair me video selected. We're gonna hit the Q key and that's going to connect it to our primary storyline as well. And so just as a refresher really quick, we have all of our layers now in place in the order that they're going to appear. The left me is gonna be at the back because he's gonna walk behind everybody. Right me is going to be in the middle because he's gonna be in front of left me but behind chair me. And then chair me is going to be in the front so he up at the top. And I shall call him Jeremy Roberts the third. Now to achieve the final result here, all we really need to do is use our magnetic mask. And our magnetic mask is going to be used on two different clips here. We're going to mask out chair me so that just he is visible. We're going to mask out right me down in the next layer so that only he is visible. And then both of them are going to sit in front of the left me video that has the entire background in it. So let's dive right into this. This is going to be the fun part. We're gonna click on chair me over here. We're gonna go over to our enhancement tools here and we're gonna click add magnetic mask. And now that the magnetic mask is available here to us, we're going to actually select our character. And it selected most of me, so I'm just gonna add a little bit up here at the top, make sure the head is connected, and beautiful. That's it, that's all we need to do. Now we've got him actually selected. We're gonna go through the process of analyzing this one. We'll be back in a second. While this is doing the analysis, I just want to say I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas out there, Happy Holidays, and that you're enjoying this time with family, with friends, and that you're able to just relax and kind of take some time off from work. And I also just want to say thanks so much for watching. It really does help out the channel when you watch, when you click, when you like, when you subscribe, when you comment on things. I just love that you do it. I really need an M-Series Mac. <laughs> Now that that first magnetic mask is analyzed, we can actually just kind of click up here so that it's now visible and you can see now chair me is visible and right me is visible because now chair me here is basically cut out and he's sitting on top of that second video. And so if we were to kind of just kind of scrub through this, you can see that they're both in the scene now. And if I were getting super picky about this, I would go in and I would kind of like feather it back a little bit probably because you can see a very distinct line here. So I would just kind of like feather it back a little bit like that, not too much because you can see as I feather that, it's also feathering the bottom. And we'll take care of that later by just putting like a letter box on the top and the bottom to hide that little defect here. But basically when I feather that, it's feathering away from the bottom. So that's something to be aware of. You just kind of want to make sure that as you're kind of like feathering it back a little bit, that it's not taking away too much. And it's a, it's a delicate balance here trying to find that right little feathering for this, but the more you play around with it, the more you'll get it right. Now that we have that one completed, let's actually go through and apply the magnetic mask to the second layer. So I'm actually gonna hide this layer by clicking on it and hitting V, and that's gonna disable the layer for a minute. And so when we go down to this one, now we want to actually add a magnetic mask to this one. And so now we go through and we wanna actually choose our subject. So we're gonna choose the black shirt. I find that choosing the black shirt first helps actually make the selection work better. So I kind of like to do that first and then it will figure out the rest. Now I don't want what's between the arm here. So I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm gonna click in there. And that actually does very successfully getting rid of that. And it looks like I've got everything masked here that I want masked. And so back into the analysis we go. I have said this in previous videos, but I have an Intel Mac and the analysis on the magnetic mask on an Intel Mac is not pleasant. It is not pleasant at all. So you will see that I am just speeding through this on your end, but I'm sitting impatiently through it on my end, just so you know. Okay, and now that both of these are analyzed, if I click up here, I, now I can see both of these people. And if I click on this one and I hit the V key to make it visible again, now I have all three of my actual characters in the video here, and they've all been brought in at the correct time. And everything is correct as we go through, just like I want it. So that's actually perfect. So we can see that as I scrub through this, I've got all three of my characters here. They're all talking. I'm actually just going to detach the audio now from all of these. 
And the way that I edited it, it was just three copies of the same audio, so I'm just going to delete two of them. And so now we have all of the audio in the correct place. And the only thing I need to do now, so if I kind of scrub through this, you can see everything is pretty good except for that little space down here at the bottom. And so now that we have all three of these composited into the scene, all we need to do is add some letterbox. So that's that black on the top and the bottom so that it kind of all comes together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all three of these and I'm gonna hold down the option key and I'm gonna hit G and that's going to create a compound clip for me. So I will just call this my video clip and now that I have this all-in-one compound clip I'm going to apply that letterbox to it so I'm gonna go down to my stylize effects down here and I'm gonna scroll down until I find letterbox and I'm just gonna drag that and drop that on top of the clip and now you can see that that added the black to the top and the bottom and I'm going to just set the border size up a little bit so it kind of takes up more space like this and now we have our finished video completely composited together and ready to go. And that's all there is to creating this cloning video with the magnetic mask. We just had to go through each of the different layers and we had to mask out each of the individuals. So the chair me in the front was masked out completely. The right me was masked out completely so that the two of them are actually just the subjects placed on top of the background of the left me. And the left me now is able to get up at a certain point and is able to pass behind all of those characters. Now you can see as it passes behind this one, there's a little bit of a kind of white line there. So we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna go into that compound clip. I'm gonna click on write me and you guessed it, I'm gonna do just a little bit of feathering into the negative to get rid of that line, just like that. Now if I jump back out here out of the compound clip, you can see as he walks by like this and gets up, walks by, that white line isn't as obvious there anymore, and it's good. And that's all we had to do to create our composited cloning effect video. Now I'm just gonna do a, a couple of quick little edits that I'm not gonna show you here. I'm just gonna like zoom in on a couple of places and maybe kind of clean it up a little bit, maybe do some color correction, but all of that is just kind of quick stuff that I'll do on the side. You saw this in the introduction, but let's watch it again. Let's watch our final video. You ever watch those videos where people clone themselves? Yeah. I love those types of videos. Yeah, me too. How do they do those? Yeah, so a lot of times people will actually just use a split screen. They'll essentially create a mask and they'll film one part of the conversation over here. They'll film another part of the conversation over here. They'll just make sure that the background is the same in both videos. And then they'll use the mask to actually splice those together. And sometimes they'll even use a green screen or a chroma key to actually composite the different people into the scene. But now that we have the magnetic mask, I think it's gonna be a lot easier and we're gonna have a lot more freedom when we do these cloning effects. That's actually really cool. Dude, are we doing another magnetic mask video? How many of these are we gonna do? <laughs> we're doing another video, aren't we? Yeah, we are. So that, folks, is how you create a cloning video using the magnetic mask. It's actually so much easier to do now, and you have so much more control over being able to allow characters to kind of walk behind each other, interact. You have to go a little bit deeper if you want your characters to be able to kind of embrace and hug each other and touch each other and kind of get in their space like that. That definitely involves a little bit more work, but if you just want your characters to be able to cross each other and kind of go within their paths back and forth like that, then the magnetic mask is an amazing tool to make Make that happen. Now one of the tricks with a video like this is you essentially are acting out all three parts, right? So you're kind of, you are the right person, the left person, and the center person. And so when you do your recording of this, when you do the actual recording in the video, you want to just make sure that your, whatever character has to react to the other characters, you just kind of planned it out and you're timing it out. So like when I recorded this intro, the center me was the first one that I recorded. And so I sat there and I did all of that, all of the lines of that one person. And I would look back, right? And I would kind of like acknowledge that those other people were there when obviously they weren't. And I would just kind of pace it out that way. And then I timed myself doing that middle character. And then after that, when I did each of the side characters, I watched that time and I knew when they needed to say the things that they needed to say. So the actual filming part of this, I think is the most complicated. The magnetic mask part, 
that's the easy part. That's just the fun part. That's when you kind of go in and you can do the editing and you can just apply the mask and you can make some corrections and do a few fixes here and there and then you're done. It's quick, it's easy, it's fun. If I haven't made it abundantly clear at this point, I love the magnetic mask. As always, just want to say thanks so much for watching. Thanks for being a part of this community. I really appreciate you showing up and watching the videos. Please be sure to like the video if you liked it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.